Jumping off the porch like mom's not home Tell me why the best things feel so wrong Summer nights, love them how they take so long What's up guys, it's Josh and we're back again with another video. Today is the next installment in uh, my Yale student interview series. And today I have a very special guest, a, another one of the people that lives on the beautiful floor. Objectively, the best floor of the best college. In Timothy Dwight College. In, in, yeah, in Timothy yeah, Dwight. It's a, it's a pretty good floor. we got a lot of cool people. This is Kingry. He's, if you guys remember Walker from a couple videos ago, this is this is Walker's roommate. He, King, Kingry's the man. Okay, I mean, I, I don't have anything else to say about him. He's, he's a great guy. He's from Texas, right? Oh, yeah. Where in Texas? Yes. I am from Hallsville, Texas. None of you know where that is. What's the population there? There's like 300 people there, maybe. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's a really, really small town. Like, if you get a mental picture of small town Texas, you're probably inadvertently imagining Hallsville right now. I mean, there's like three traffic lights and two Mexican food restaurants. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, and a Baptist church, and there, there you have Hallsville. Uh, so, by the way, if you Hallsville guys are watching this, what's up? Gotta represent. So, uh, is it true that you're like the first person from your town oh, yeah. to get accepted? I, I, I'm the first person from my town in the history of my town to get into an Ivy. Uh, there's been two other people, I believe, that got into Rice. But uh, technically, Rice is not an Ivy League, so I'm yeah. the first one. All right. So uh, what's it like living with Walker? Walker is a big man. Walker is basically the equivalent of a giant puppy dog. Very, very large humanoid puppy dog. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's very easy to entertain him. Uh, he's very easily entertained. Sometimes I just get an empty Amazon box and I throw it down, and you know that'll keep him entertained for hours. Uh, no, he's a he's a great guy. He's just a, just a big old sweetheart. Uh, love him to death. So yeah, it's we get along so well. It's, yeah, it's I know. Incredible. I know Dean was really proud of uh, pairing you guys together. Oh yeah, Dean has said that that she she was most proud about pairing us up together. It's perfect. We. Uh, we're good friends, good buddies. You want to go uh, show me your like your room? Yeah, let's go. So y'all can see what I have to live with. <laughs> we went this way. We got our uh, top-notch security system here. Oh, it's good stuff. There we go. Coat hangers even broken. <laughs> There's Walker's office. Closet. Oh yeah. Hey, you gotta show him my setup. Look at that. Oh yeah, there's Kangaroo's setup. Yeah. That's pretty nice. So you got four people living in this suite? Technically six, because right over there. Oh yeah, across the hall is Jacob and Jacob Ethan. Jacob and Ethan. So they, they share everything. We, we allow them. All right, here's our humble abode. I sleep here. I'm shorter, so I don't have to jump as far. <laughs> uh, just walkers. Yeah, I didn't realize your bed's shorter than walkers. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's very intentional because I thought about putting it up to walkers' height, and then I realized that I... <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is absolutely incredibly tiny. You guys got a bigger closet than we do, though. Yeah, unfortunately, that's like most of them. And a wardrobe. That's and nice. Wardrobe. That's my wardrobe. That's nice. Check out the fam. Gotta, gotta always have the fam. Oh, yeah. Uh, Walker hooked us up with an AC, which is I didn't awful. even realize that you guys had your own AC. Yeah, we had our own AC. That's probably nice for uh, when was, it gets hot. That was really nice in the summer. This is nice. You guys don't have to live in bunk beds like everyone over there does. That was the one thing. Like, I was... I was willing to put up with almost anything but bunk beds. <laughs> I could not do bunk beds. It's All awful. Right. <laughs> Let's head back. So, Kingery, um, obviously us Yale students, we, we were pretty involved in high school, tried to do a lot of stuff. Um, what did you do in high school, like extracurricular wise? Um, and what was like your high school experience like? Oh, good grief, what didn't I do? Uh, 
Okay, so, Kingy. Yeah. <laughs> big guy. No, no, no. Like this is this is every Yaley's story. So you should start making it yours if you haven't already. <laughs> I was president of the student council. I was president of the National Honor Society. I was president of the class of 2017. I was team captain of Lincoln Douglas debate. Look yeah, who it is. This is my video. Jake, what are you, Jake, you already had your video. Jake. Get out of here. This was, this uh, was intentional. I promise you this was intentional. What? Jake coming in. Jake, Jake is sabotaging my video. Anyway. He just, he just, everyone loved him in the comments section. He just wants more of the Keeps spotlight. Keeps coming back. That was it. This is, uh, anyway, where was I? Talking about. President of class 2017. Yeah. Team captain, Lincoln Douglas debate. Oh, I gave the morning announcements. <laughs> I emceed all the pep rallies. I played football, which basically equated me watching from the sidelines. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I had fun doing it. You know, <laughs> best seats in the house where you stand the whole time in pads. Uh, so <laughs> I was a mediocre player on a mediocre. High school team, so yeah, that's how it goes. Well, that's a, that's a pretty busy schedule you had there. It was, it was, but you know, but it you enjoyed doing it, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, did powerlifting too. Powerlifting, it's fun. Yeah, it's really fun. Big guy. Big guy. <laughs> so, uh, why do you think uh, you got into Yale? And like, like, what was your like special thing? Did you have anything that like distinguished you? Or, I mean, when your application got dropped in front of the admissions officers' faces, why why do you think that they picked you? I mean, I filled it up with as much as I could. Uh, I'm a big opportunist. So anything that I thought, hey, this might look good on a uh, resume, I went and did. Like, you know, People to People World Leadership Forum in Washington, D.C. I did Boys State. Uh, I did Boys State, too. Texas. Hey! Yeah, I did Boys State in Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you know the song? Boys State song? Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to sing it right now. Come on. Oh, but it would be different because yours is Virginia and mine is Texas. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. So it's like, boys from every part of Texas come Yeah, ours is completely different. Here. It's completely different. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's We don't weird. need to sing. It's weird, but, yeah. you know, do it if you get the, if you're a boy. Boy state is a great. If you're a boy, if you're definitely going to do it. They have a girl state. I was getting there. Okay, so uh, you, go ahead. Go ahead. Big got advocate it. for gender equality. Anyway, <laughs> you're a girl, and you have to have to do girl state. Do that as well. Yeah, but anything like that that I could possibly get a hold of, I did. And so that that way, I looked like I had a really strong you know, resume to give them. I've been doing all this stuff, do all these extracurriculars, did all these special events, made the good grades. You know, basically like Yale-type stuff. I tried to make sure that my application looked like what I imagined a Yale student's application should look like. And I also uh, happen to be from a family of 10, in case you missed the uh, large amount of people that was in that picture. Uh, so, and we were, we were in the uh, lower income level. So if that applies to any of you there, I don't want you to leave you know, thinking that you can't get into an Ivy League. So at first I thought, you know, no possible way I'm going to be able to get into an Ivy because, you know, the thing about Ivies is that they're super expensive. But there are programs that the Ivies offer that help you get the foot in the door. And I think the way the admissions officer actually phrased it, this is line for line, he said, put a finger on the scale. So there's, there's programs you could do that. The program I chose was QuestBridge. And it's a good program. I mean, I didn't get the QuestBridge, whatever they call it, QuestBridge finalist or whatever that was that gets paired with a school. I just got to send my applications in for free. So, I mean, if you want, go check out and see if you qualify for that. Yeah. And that's already a good way to, to get started working on getting into an Ivy. So I don't, want, I don't want anybody to think that because of their income they can't get in to an Ivy League. That should never be a factor that you can that you consider yeah that's a good point definitely. so uh a lot of the viewers are not only like juniors and seniors looking at applying to college they're also uh you know freshmen or even like middle schoolers that are trying to get an early jump on the whole college application process which is good 
Good for y'all. Good for all you seventh and eighth graders. Do you have any advice for those people that are like just starting high school? Because I know talking to a lot of people, they have a lot of regrets from like their early years of high school. Do you have any advice for those people? I do. Freshman year is the most important year when it comes to your GPA, which is weird because a lot of people think that you can just, you know, take it easy and kind of, you know, I don't, you know, half, half rear end your your way through uh through freshman year don't do it you you go into freshman year and you start swinging immediately do not let your grades drop it is imperative somebody told me that and i followed it and that's in large part why i am here today is because i had a good foundation my freshman year for my gpa that i could build off of and even if i had a rough year you know, later on, which I did my junior year, I already had that foundation and I wasn't super stressed about the grades that I had to make because I had already made the right decision freshman year with the easier classes to do as good as I could and I ended up on top because of that. Yeah, that's a really good point because also um, your freshman year you're not going to have the opportunity to take as many honors or AP classes which are the uh, a lot of times the weighted classes that boost your GPA. So if you're getting like B's or maybe like even C's in regular classes, your, G- your GPA is going. That's like a three, down. right? Now that's like a three on the GPA scale. Whereas like a B in an AP class, you're still sitting at a four. Right. So if you're getting if you're getting A's in AP classes your junior year, but you got B's in regular classes your freshman year, I mean you just like. You kind of ruined yourself your freshman year. You got to you got to hold strong. You got to start early. Create the foundation right off the bat and then when you're taking these harder, higher level classes, you won't have to worry so much about having to make an A because you've already done the preliminary work your freshman year. Yeah. Okay, we talked about the people that are like just starting high school, but what about the the juniors that are starting to like develop their list of colleges or the seniors that maybe have like already started applying early and the, the regular decision um, application deadlines coming up soon. Do you have any advice for them? Uh, yeah, have some idea of what you want to do, May, even if it's like two or three things, because a lot of people have no idea what they're going to do yeah. whenever they grow up. And that, that leads to a problem when applying to colleges because you don't want to apply to MIT and go through all that paperwork if you want to be an author. I and mean, MIT is not the school for you if you want to do that. So if you know, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a pharmaceutical lawyer, then you can start looking at schools that might help you accomplish that goal. And I'm not saying you have to know exactly what you want to be as soon as you set foot on whatever college you end up going to. I'm just saying, you need to know what you want to do, what you'd like to do, and then you need to look at colleges that have options for you to do that. If you love writing and you love English, but you hate math, then you probably don't want to go to MIT. And I keep hating on MIT, but like, if, if you hate yeah. writing and you hate English and you love math, you, you probably want to apply to MIT. You know, this, this is just the things that you got to start thinking about. Mm-hmm. And you should always apply to Yale because Yale has everything. So that is, that's, uh, that's my advice as far as that goes. Yeah. Are you back? Jake, you want to come crash the video again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he keeps sabotaging. All right, you got you to gotta comment. You got to comment. Kingry Sullins is better, than, better looking than Jake. And hashtag do it for know. Jake. <laughs> no, hash, hashtag do it for Kingry. That's K I N G R E Y. All right. There you go. That's, that's your mission. He thinks he thinks he can walk in here and get get into other people's videos. Jake just loves the spotlight. This is not, this is not your interview. Oh, how right. creative. Oh, man. What a guy.